We're currently testing all characters in the final beta, and only once we reach the available end game we'll release out a tier list. Damn, dude, they don't have a tier list. Ah, oh. but what we can maybe check out other than the characters is is there more clarification on the five star percentages on the banners? Previously, they didn't actually have it, but it seems that they do. Okay. HSR, five star character on the standard banner. I'm assuming this is the standard banner. Or the departure banner, rather, the departure one. So you can only warp 50 times, uh, but you are guaranteed uh, to obtain one five star within the 50 warps. You can do, you cannot do single warps on the departure. You can only warp in multis of 10, commonly referred to as a 10 pull or a multi pull. However, you will receive a 20% discount every time you warp. So eight passes instead of 10. The rate of pulling a five star is 0.6%, and the rate of pulling a four star is 5.1%. No characters or light cones have an increased rate on this warp. You can only use Star Rail passes on this one basic summon ticket. And they do have the two new characters on this one. Ah, okay, so these characters are launching with the game. Okay, I thought these characters, Bai Lu and uh, Yan Qing, were going to be like um, extra banners and additions like Venti and Klee were very soon after the game launches, but they are just going to be standard banners. Very interesting. So they're going to start off with seven characters on the standard banner. Two more than Genshin. Um, do they have the info for... It's the same thing for the standard banner. Scrolling down, 0. 0.6 for the standard. 5.1, or rather, 0. 0.6 for 5 stars. And then um, 5.1 for 4 stars. Once you do 300 pulls, though, you'll be able to pick one 5 star available in the banner. So... Is that a cumulative thing? So 300, every single 300 pulls, you'll be able to pick a character? Or is it that it's you have a guaranteed weapon on the 300th pull? The wording is very particular, and I'd want to I'd wanna see this hands-on. Because if it's every 300th pull, you get a guaranteed weapon, that can be reset by getting one early, thus the guaranteed system is not there. But if it's essentially every 300 pulls, you are just, you are allowed to pick one at your choose, at your choice rather. Um, but getting things in between there, it's fair game, it doesn't reset it, then that's actually pretty cool, I'd say. That's a pretty generous thing to do, uh, is that, Anything you get in between is yours, but every 300th, you are guaranteed to pick whatever you desire. Which is, if it's that way, that's actually rather impressive. I'm just going to say, that's very, very nice. Uh, I'd probably want a bit more clarification on exactly how it goes, but there it is. But then, that's on the standard banner. That's obviously just for the standard banner, which is fair enough to have on the standard banner. These, I don't think many characters are going to be added to the standard banner after this. Uh, if anything, in very far in the future, it'd probably be um, added. Uh, but on the featured character banner, one five star, four, oh, sorry, three four stars, same percentages, 0. 0.6 for five star, 5.1 for four star. And then it's the same Genshin Impact. Yeah, as we predicted, um, uh, as we predicted, it's the same as Genshin's rates, 50% chance. It's, it's a 50 50 system. If you, do, if you get it, uh, if you get a five star, oh, sorry, yeah, is, yeah, it's five stars. I thought it was this last second. If you get a, if you get a five star, it's a 50-50 between the rate up and any other 5 star currently there. And if you lose, the next one will be guaranteed the rate up. So yeah, you're guaranteed a 5 star within 90 pulls. That's the pity. So if you're unlucky, 180 to get the rate up. You can only use the special summons here. Uh, one 5 star light cone, three 4 star light cones. The percent chances are increased by... So the 5 star light cone gets a 0.8%. That's 0.2% higher than the character. And um, four star light cone is six point six. That's a few more percentages above the the characters. Once you pull a five star light cone, you have a seventy five chance of it being of the rate up. If you lose the roll, the second this is what I was expecting, and this is good. There we have it, boys. We this is a W. This is a W. So when we looked at this prior to the final beta arriving, I was very on the fence of, is it going to be, unfortunately, like Genshin Impacts, where it's a three-way 50-50 with their dog shit fucking uh, choosing your weapon, and then you have to do, like, like essentially you have to get, what is it, 240 rolls to guaranteed? No, it's not. It's 160 for a guaranteed, but you have a 75% chance of it being the rate up. That's great. Oh, my God. This sounds great. This sounds great. 
it's a 50 50 uh, sorry 75 25 for it to be the rate up on your first one if you don't get it if you lose that 25 percent chance uh the next one will be guaranteed the rate up 80 pulls is pity fucking great amazing oh this is what we needed this is what we needed this is what genshin needs why can't genshin do this riddle me this genshin come on come on brother it's so simple so simple wow the rate the, the banners have a, a really nice sounding so this the this is the the starter banner where you'll just be able to get a guaranteed five star if you just use your warps which you should at the start of every gacha game if they have this use your shit there you'll get good stuff and then they have the standard warp which has standard shit and standard characters but you do have this um 300 pulls gives you a five star um how it works is to be pro i think the game probably knows or people who played the game probably know i don't know but i'd assume it's the generous way of anything you get in between zero and 300 is just bonus but at 300 you are guaranteed to just pick one which is i think cool and then you have the featured character banner which is just like genshin's the rates the actual percentages aren't like genshin's but it's the the method is 90 pity 50 50 and then it's a guaranteed if you lose the 50 50 but then the light cone banner chef's kiss is a 75 25 with a decent chance well, i say decent chances it's not that decent actually 0.8 percent is is uh is that what what's yeah what's honkai's is honkai's like uh lower than that or high well, i think honkai's is higher than that uh, i think i don't know i think genshin's is also higher than that. i think genshin's like one point something or is it point six maybe genshin's is point six as well on this one so maybe uh this is higher uh and then uh, yeah it it's like the 75 25 and then if you lose the 25 you get a guaranteed on the next one which is fucking phenomenal great job oh that right there immediately makes me want to play this game infinitely more i could see myself dropping genshin and playing honkai star rail and honkai impact if all i fucking know who knows maybe i'll do that you'll never know With uniqueness um i guess we'll take a look at re-rolling for the like i don't understand this mechanic of re-rolling in gacha games but we'll take a look at it and um uh and see if it's worth it or some shit i don't really get it but whatever uh in short is it even worth to re-roll no it's not worth it because it's the same thing as genshin it's not worth a re-roll some time ago, Mahoya removed the guest login option from their games, and obviously the option is also missing in Honkai Star Rail. This means you will need to use a different account for every reroll attempt, because assaulting isn't working here either. Uh, so if you're already playing Genshin Impact, for example, if you plan to reroll, there's no way to have both games on the same account. It takes around 30 to 40 minutes to finish the tutorial and reach the moment when you can actually start pulling. The long time is caused by the tutorial being quite story heavy, and you can't skip any other conversations and have to click through them. The game rates are pretty low, 0 0.6 for a 5 star. So it may take you time to, uh, may take you even a whole day of rolling to get one, and it's a high chance it'll be someone that you don't want, as you'll be only do roughly 20 to 22, 22 pulls when you unlock warping. While we will, will receive 20 star rail passes, some tickets for pre-registration, uh, you can't use them on the raid up banners. So for re-rolling for Sealy or whoever will be the raid up uh, is basically impossible. Yeah, none of this re-rolling, dude. Don't really care. Um, what was the next one? Combat and exploration. Did we did we even have a look at this one? I don't think much would have changed here. All of these things probably do the same. Yeah, we're not going to take a look at that. Game systems. Is this probably something that they changed? Trailblaze power missions. Daily missions, eh? Mm, okay, so we'll, we'll take a look at what you'll expect to receive through game systems. So trailblaze power. Uh, trailblaze level increases from, uh, and you have like milestones at level 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 65. Uh, so five levels and the maximum is 70. So that's what, but 60, all those milestones are when you get challenges. Uh, so on and so forth, you get rewards. Trailblaze power is your energy, obviously. Uh, trailblaze power is a stamina, like yada, yada, yada. You have a store of 180 to a max. You restore one per six minutes. Um, a total of 240 can be generated every day, yada, yada, yada. And then you have your daily missions. Missions in Honkai Impact Star Rail come in three varieties. Uh, missions are, are the main story missions. They reward stellar jades, the game's currency, and are that required for the game. Uh, the account progression as completing them is the only way to unlock new areas. You have adventure. Adventure missions are side missions. Some reward stellar jades. And then you have your training Training missions are daily missions. You'll receive five training missions every day. Each training mission will provide you with 200 or 100 activity points, and you need to gather 500 in total to obtain all daily rewards, which is 60 stellar jades, 1,000 trailblaze experience. 
that many credits, nine lost gem fragments, and three adventures logs, which is level up materials. Okay. Like every game pretty much that launches, they have a op operation briefing or do X amount of challenges bullshit that you just have to do arduous tasks or rather trivial tasks uh, to achieve random things, rolls, jades, whatnot, so on and so forth. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it, the tasks consist of play the game, right? That's all the tasks are. Play the game. It's not really anything that you'll have to think about. And also, even as an open game, I don't even think Genshin has this. I may, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think Genshin has like a go button. And I saw uh, people interacting with the system and it just takes you to the menu that you need, which is very good. Very good. Achievements, it's just achievements, nothing really that great. They'll reward you much like Genshin Impact achievements do with small uh, currency boosts and whatnot, still jades. Assignments are passive activities that the player can assign their characters to do. While on assignments, characters will passively gather resources and materials for the player. They are equivalent to expeditions in other gacha games. The player can send four characters of two, eight total out on assignments at any given time. Each assignment has a duration of four, eight, 12, and 20 hours. Once completed, the character will bring back the resources and materials listed in the reward section of the assignment. Uh, it's a Genshin Impact Expedition system because these time intervals are exactly the same. Um, it's, um, I'm not a massive fan of this system. I think it's pretty dog water. I much prefer something how it's done in Archland where you just kind of have passive resource generation through buildings instead of your characters because this here requires active usage as you have to come back to this menu every single time. But that's just a personal preference. Really would game take... Uh, sorry, I, I'll read this now though. Uh, really would a game make first part of the story unskippable and the rest skippable unless they intend to make it a demotivate re-rolling. Maybe it is to demotivate re-rolling. Maybe it is. Uh, and that's all of the systems for the base part of the game. Very cool. This last part I just don't fucking like, really. I, I hate doing this in Genshin because it's just fucking annoying, really. Unless Hostarel has a better UI for it, which... It seems to actually have a better UI for it. But maybe that's just me not remembering how Genshin's UI is for it. But that's okay. Everything here looks good. But 60 Stellar Jades, that's the same rewarding uh, nomenclature. Nomenclature? That's the wrong word. Uh, the same rewarding amount for Genshin as 100, 180 Stellar Jades is how many you... Or is it 160? 160 Stellar Jades is one roll, and you get 60 per day. So you're going to be able to get 100... It takes you three days to grind out one roll, which is whatever the fuck, whatever. You know, depends on how much of the rest of the game rewards you. Depends on if that's good. Uh, but three days to get one roll. Yeah. Depends on how easy or hard these things are to do, because... What is it? Complete one daily mission, clear one calyx, uh, level up a relic. In a single battle, inflict three weakness break or debuffs. You need to get 500 of this, and that one just sounds not fun to do. Some of these, it depends on how fun they are to do, depends on if I'll enjoy doing these things. Uh, but, yeah, so far so good, why not? Um, game modes. We'll do this one in just a second. Hopefully we can just assign expedition uh, on the go while exploring. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it's just like a drop down menu that appears and you can do it anywhere instead of having to go to a specific location. Uh, but now let's look at the systems that, well, one that we just read, Calyx. Calyx? Calyx, who knows? But these look like the Genshin Impact talent book things. But yeah, let's just read. These are your basic resource stages and provide one of the following materials on which Calyx stage you are farming. Calyx Bud of Memories is XP character materials. Light Cone materials is Bud of Ether. And Bud of Grit is credits. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward. Use the domain system like Genshin Impact. There are seven different Calyx stages, each corresponding to one of the seven paths. These Calyx cycle daily and provide character trace upgrade materials and Light Cone Ascension materials. Not a fan of the daily cycling stuff. I'm, that's just me personally, but there is one bonus that they have given here is the fact that it is day by day orientated. Unlike Genshin, where it's like three different types of uh, talent materials cycling across seven different days. Uh, it seems Honkai Star Rail has seven, seven different things, uh, calyxes cycling on seven different days. So one day is always assigned to one calyx. So Monday will be destruction, and then Tuesday will be uridation, and so on and so forth. So it would be a lot easier to remember it. Um, but then again, I could just read further ahead and prove myself wrong. Monday and Thursday is erudation and harmony. Tuesday and Friday is hunt and nihility. Wednesday and Saturday are uh, destruction, preservation, and abundance. And Sunday is all of them. 
I proved myself wrong within a fraction of a second, and it's crazy how it happens. It costs 10 Trailblaze power to do one Calyx stage. You can queue up six Calyx runs at a time, especially, essentially, this allows you to repeat the same Calyx stage without having to exit and re-enter. Each run will cost you 10 Trailblaze power, 60 if you do queue up runs. Oh. Oh, really? No autocomplete? You have to queue it up? And you have to watch them all happen? Is this going to be one of those situations where you just press a button and you leave your device to AFK whilst you go make a cup of tea and you come back and it's not done? Is that going to be one of these situations that nobody likes? Is this going to be one of those situations that nobody likes? Listen, maybe an autocomplete button removes a lot of fun. But god damn it does it make the game a lot more enjoyable to play, let me be real with you. But we'll have to wait and see what queuing up means. Maybe it's really fun, maybe it's really fast rather, sorry not fun. Maybe it's really fast and maybe there's like three times speed and you can kind of get through it a lot quicker if you can clear all of it in just an autoplay, right? Who knows? Anyway, Stagnant Shadow. These stages uh, reward character ascension materials. There are seven different stagnant stages, each one corresponding to one element, and it costs 30 trailblaze power to do one Stagnant Shadow stage. This is for character ascension material, which is not something that you're going to be doing overly frequently, just to ascend your characters through to the next threshold. Quite simple, like Genshin. Uh, Cavern Corrosion. These stage rewards relics, which is your equipment, I believe. Uh, it costs 40 trailblaze power to do one Cavern of Corrosion. Uh, yeah, I believe the relics are the Genshin backed artifact equivalent, which is, hey, listen, I'm 40 Trailblaze power. You have a hundred and how much in total? Where was it again? Was it 180? Was it 180? I think it was 180. You have 180 in total, 40, you do eight. I can't do math. Four runs? Four runs. You do four runs because, yeah. I suck at maths. Fucking hell. You do some amount of runs. Um, and you get gear. It is, it is. Echo of War. These are your weekly boss stages and reward relics. Trackers of Destiny, which is a character skill level up material. And Light Cones. You can do uh, only do three Echo of War runs every week. However, you can do the same Echo of War stage multiple times. Very good. That's a very good touch. Now, here's why that's a good touch. Now, Genshin runs into a specific problem at certain stages of its kind of patch release day, and it very much happens when a world boss is released. Usually, when a world boss is released, people are very much in a desperate desire to get good RNG of the world boss's specific material drop rate so they can actually level up the recently released character who needs that material. This alleviates that problem to a certain extent because if you need a specific boss, you just farm that one three times a week and you get the materials relatively quickly instead of having to do one per week, thus a very slow accumulation. So this is actually a rather good change. Very good. But you only can do it three times a week, which is the same as Genshin. Uh, no, it's not. Sorry. No, Genshin is not like that. Sorry, Genshin is infinite, but you get a reduction for three, uh, three times a week, which is... Sorry, but that was my bad. Uh, yeah, three times a week. Eh, that's fine. Whatever. Uh, again, if you're an early game player, this is not going to affect you too much because there's probably not going to be seven bosses at the start of the game. There's going to be probably one, two, maybe, and you're going to be running them consistently. But if you're obviously a, uh, a, a late starter, you know, starting maybe two months in, four months in, a year in, uh, it's going to affect you most of all. But maybe there'll be some catch-up systems implemented later on. Um, it costs 30 Trailblaze power to do one Echo War stage. Quite simple. I'm not going to watch the gameplay example because it's just a boss and... It, it, just a boss. That's that. Forgotten Hall is a game mode where the objective is to defeat a group of enemies in as few turns as possible. After completing a Forgotten Hall stage, you will enter, you will be awarded uh, between zero or three stars for the stage, depending on how many turns it took you to defeat the enemy in the stage. The more stars that you are awarded, the better the rewards you receive. Ooh, it seems like a bit of an Elise, not Elysian Realm, sorry, the other one, the Genshin one. Oh, fuck, what's its name? Spiral Abyss. Got it. Spiral Abyss. Seems like a bit of a Spiral Abyss moment. Uh, it is a more challenging game mode with the final stages being considered as end game content. Forgotten Hall is divided into two parts, Memory and Memory of Chaos. Memory consists of 15 stages and provides a one-time reward of Stellar Jade upon completion, which is your 1 to 8 in Genshin. This is essentially a 1 to 1 kind of rendition of Spiral Abyss. Memory, uh, this difficulty, Memory, is your 
Spiral Abyss 1 to 8, uh, and then Memory of Chaos would be your 9 to 12, essentially. A Memory of Chaos, which is the latter, latter difficulty, consists of 10 stages and rewards stellar jades upon completion. Memory of Jades are more challenging than Memory stages. Sorry, Memory of Chaos are more difficult than Memory. Uh, memory of Chaos stages reset periodically, allowing the player to complete them again for additional Jades. But how periodically is the real question now? How periodically? Um, I'm not going to look at the gameplay though, because uh, again, it's just going to be you fighting enemies, nothing too crazy. Um, but if it's weekly, I'm kind of down for that. If it's fucking too weekly, like gen shit, then I'm going to be moderately annoyed, but hopefully it's not. Hopefully it is a weekly reset. I, I do appreciate a weekly reset. Um, next thing, Simulated Universe. Simulated Universe is a rogue-like game mode where the player will venture inside a simulated world to collect a random set of buffs that they can use to enhance their team to fight the enemies inside. Uh, we can see here it has a, a six day reset, has a bunch of different stages, has a score, has a store. This seems like a very interesting system. Now, completing this game mode will reward you with stellar jades and herter bonds used in the herter store to buy things. Simulated universe resets weekly, allowing you to obtain additional stellar jades and herter bonds every week. Simulated universe is divided into two parts, exploration mode and challenge mode. In exploration mode, the player will form a team of characters, enter a roguelike dungeon to gather curios and blessings, which are called random buffs essentially, as well as new allies, which is kind of going to be like a labyrinth in uh, Eversoul, if anyone has played it. It's going to be like that essentially. While in exploration mode, the player will give, uh, be given objectives. Completing these objectives will reward stellar jades and herter bonds, as well as tokens for the coin machine, uh, coin gacha machine, which can be used to obtain various resources and materials. After completing the exploration mode, the player's current team and any curios and blessings collected will be saved. This team and the collected buffs will be what the player can bring into the simulated universe's challenge mode in challenge mode the player will face off against a number of tough enemies which rewards additional herter bonds if the player manages to defeat them at the start of each week an aeon or a star god will grant the player its blessing this blessing takes the form of a buff that the player can use while inside the simulated universe this buff can be upgraded by the player and is usable in both exploration and challenge mode very cool very nice I'm wrong uh, what do we gather from this one, though? Essentially, this is a your roguelike game mode, Elysian Realm, if you will, uh, a mixture of the both. The Stellar Jades is your crystals, obviously, that you get from Elysian Realm, and your Herter Bonds is your Elysian Realm shop currency. Simply converted, that's how it is. You use your Herter Bonds to probably go into the Herter store right here to buy um, character fragments or certain items to boost your power or certain items to make the game easier, like skip items or, you know, quick complete items, so on and so forth. That's how it's going to be. Uh, and Stellar Jades, it seems here, are only acquired through the exploration mode, the exploration mode difficulty, which is seems to be the just, just get your Stellar Jades and do that once a week. And then if you want to get more things, more Herder Bonds to buy more things from the Herder Shop, you do Challenge Mode, which gives you just more Herder Bonds. It doesn't say anything about giving you more Herder, uh, more, uh, sorry, Stellar, Stellar Jades. It just says more Herder Bonds, which is fine. But it does seem to me, though, that you do have to complete Exploration Mode to then attempt Challenge Mode, which may kind of... Some people may have a problem with that because you have to do two things of the same kind to just get one set of rewards, essentially, in uh, your mind, technically. But probably going to be fine because it doesn't seem like it's going to be overly long because it's only six worlds if this is just one run. Uh, but I could be wrong about that. Who knows? Potentially. Um, okay, that was. this sounds great. Again, what have we learned from this whole tab is that there's a lot of game modes. Uh, the energy spending seems to be like, again, I one, to f one for one like Genshin Impact. Unfortunately, not a massive fan of it myself, but others may be inclined to like it. Um, but... It is what it is. Uh, that, that's that, really. Uh, th that's the energy spending. Then you have Echo of War, which seems to be... Um, oh, sorry, not Echo of War. Sorry, the Forgotten Hall, which is the Spiral Abyss-like system, the Genshin Impact Spiral Abyss-like system, uh, where it has a one-time game mode thing called Memory, and then you have Memory of Chaos, which is your 8 to 12 uh, floors, uh, which is going to be difficult, obviously. It doesn't say the reset of it, which is one thing that I would have liked. And then you have your simulated universe, which is a weekly resetting system, a bit more along the lines of Elysian Realm, where it's a roguelike dungeon and you get a lot of varying different buffs to help you along the way. And, you, and essentially, a similar system with the Herder store as well as the crystals. 
very cool so far. The systems seem very good. Uh, next thing, what do we have next? Character progression. Um, would they have changed anything in the character progression? I don't think they would have included anything else. I don't believe so. I guess we'll take a quick skim through the um, uh, the character progression. So to level up your character or increase their power, it's the same thing. Character level, their traces, their eidolons, light cones, and relics. All that shit is probably going to be explained in the game much better. Character level is your level. Traces is your talents. Eidolons is your constellations or your getting duplicates of the character. Your light cone is their pseudo weapon and their relics is their equipable armor. Simplified, essentially. Uh, character ranging, uh, their max level is 80. They start at 1, obviously, but they can go up to 80 as a max level, which is great. Uh, milestones and shit, and ascension and whatnot. It's a Genshin Impact Ascension system. You have a milestone. If, you're like, if your character level or your account level, sorry, is level 20, your main character or your characters can only get up to level 20. It's a milestone system. It's very simple, very straightforward. Get the materials, ascend them up, juice they out. Nice. Um, then you have the traces. Traces are a skill upgrade tree that each character has. Unlocking and upgrading various nodes in the character's traces will provide them with a stat bonus and uh, extra passive abilities and enhancement to their, uh, to their five skills because a character has a five skill. They're basic, their skill, their ultimate, their technique, and their something else. I forgot the name of it. What the fuck was it? I don't know, but it is what it is. Eidolons are your constellations or your ranking up of a character you need duplicates of a character in this case or i believe the game has an alternative as you we can see here i think this is actually for the main character that's why this is an image of there but i th i think there might be an alternative i can't remember but you just need a duplicate of the character it has unique eidolons has six eidolon upgrades uh can be upgraded by duplicating the character uh or through in-game missions and events that's how you get that and so on and so forth just duplicate the character through some method, I don't know, hack the game. Don't do that, actually. That's not good. Light cones uh, are a type of equipment that all characters can equip, equip uh, equivalent to weapons. Simple. Very, very simple. Relics are the other type of equipment in the game. Basically function as armor and accessories. Do they rem... Oh, no, the, okay, sorry. The I thought they removed two slots. I thought they, like, dropped it down to four slots. But I didn't see that the two slots in the middle weren't, um... They're not unlocked yet. Okay. Oh, dude, I had a slight heart attack there. I thought they removed two slots for no fucking reason. Jesus Christ. Yeah, relics are just your, um... Your e equipable gears. Okay. Whew. Whew. Nothing new here. Nothing new here. Uh, we've covered all of these elements. I don't think they changed anything. All the elements are just the same. Physical fire, ice, lightning, wind, quantum, and imaginary. And depending on what you break the shield with, uh, depends on like the effect that will happen. They're all pretty much the same except for quantum and imaginary, which, which will do a special effect of pushing them back in the turn order, as well as either reducing speed or dealing damage. But everything else is just a dot effect. Um, these are all the characters and only one imaginary character. Isn't that a lie? I thought there were more. Uh, huh? I thought there were... Oh, no, there was more... Quantum. No, never mind. No, there was more quantum. My bad. I thought there were, I thought there were more imaginary. Jesus Christ. Uh, this guy's go getting a wealth will be juicy goosey because um, turn order and speed reduction, which is very good in games. Um, paths. Paths is a very simple, straightforward thing as well. But remembering is going to be a tough one. Each character is a different uh, role. A role is a better word to use uh, and to understand their role in the party essentially you have abundance which is a healer a destruction which is general dps general dps summarized is essentially multi-tasking dps can do single target can do aoe can do all of the above then you have erudition which is multi-target specifically and then you have harmony which is offensive utility support then you have a hunt which is a single target dps nihility which is a debuffer i said that weirdly debuffer not debuffer uh, a debuffer, and then preservation, which is defense, support, a tank. Straightforward. Um, and here's the list of parts that currently have no characters attached to it. There's more? I had no idea they added more. These were, these were, these were not here for a while. Beauty, Elation, Enigmata, Propagator, Remembrance, Trailblaze, and Veracity. My only question or thought is, you kind of got all of them covered up here. Like, this is really, as you got them all covered. You got healer, heals, 
You got DPSs? They do DPS. You got an offensive utility support? They support you. You got a defensive support? They support you, but a bit more defensively. And you got a debuffer. But like, what could this be? Like a DPS debuffer, I guess? Maybe a bit more specific? You know, maybe make them overpowered, potentially. Who knows? And then you got each character in their respective roles in there. You know, you're going to want... I know, I have heard Kafka's really good, so you're going to want to get a Kafka or some shit. Oh. And then that is all. I'm not going to go into light cones. That's going into specific things about light cones. Um, but that's essentially it. That's that's uh, all the new stuff that Pridewin has provided us with um, on the final beta. Nice. They're gonna, probably going to put some shit like fast DPS and stuff. Probably. The DPS with much more speed than others. Oh yeah, it's, it's going to be an introduction of power creep through something. They're going to have like a debuffer DPS um, that like has super high speed and debuffs the enemies with their attacks and whatnot. So who knows? But that's that's that. I thought I, I might even upload that as like a, a pretty a pretty big video on the channel just going through everything if people want to rewatch or whatever. But that's all the systems that are in the final beta so far and that probably will make their way to the base game or to the launch of the game. So, yeah, there it is. Honkai Star Rail. Um, it's a game. 